Another example of the conceit of the self-anointed in government. They say that Americans are safer now because of, the of OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Authority. And the head of OSHA under President Clinton was fond of showing this chart about how injuries and deaths, I guess this chart is deaths, boy, I wish I could see it, um, <laughs> have dropped steadily since the beginning of OSHA. And this makes you think, right, I mean, these factories, these greedy employers would recklessly kill their employers if it weren't for government stopping them. And look how many lives we've saved because of OSHA. And I can do stories about how OSHA has silly rules that are this thick that torture companies and cause some companies not even to go into business because they can't afford to hire the lawyers to understand the rules that say the railing has to be exactly this high and you can get fined if you don't have, if it's an inch lower. Uh, but you won't believe me because you say, look at that chart, look how many lives we've saved. But then researchers went back and did another chart that looked at workplace deaths from that time and also an equal time before. And look what they found. Things were getting better anyway. In a free country, life gets better. People get smarter. As people get richer, they care more about health and safety. Even unions help. They have their work rules and even the worst of the greediest employer is doesn't want to kill his employees, if only because he'll have to spend more to train new ones. <laughs> he has a self-interest in making the workplace better. But the point is that workplaces were getting better before OSHA. OSHA, if you look at that graph, the slope of the line is the same. OSHA made no difference. The government regulators are like someone who gets in front of a parade and claims to lead the parade. But they didn't lead the pull of parade. Limited government freedom. An open society led the parade. And then going back to the other point, and, and yet the sense in Washington is that we have to do everything. We have to make sure nobody suffers, that people buy the insurance. That's the big thing with health care. It also applied to flood insurance. Homes were getting flooded and people were too lazy or too stupid to buy flood insurance. So then the government felt, well, we have to bail all of them out. Far better if we encourage them to buy insurance, but it costs too much. Those greedy private insurance companies, they're charging too much, so we're gonna offer federal flood insurance, and we know how to price it. We'll price it lower than these greedy private companies, and that'll help America. And so they offered people cheap federal flood insurance, and so I built this beach house. <laughs> I said to my father, would you help me on the mortgage? And he said, no, are you kidding? It's on the edge of an ocean. Why would I help you? This is a stupid place to build a house. It's on sand. That's me in the upper left corner there. I was younger then. And I said, but, but Dad, I can't lose. The architect explained to me there's this thing called federal flood insurance. For $200 a year, I'm guaranteed that if the house and it won't wash away, I have lots of beach in front of me, that big dune, if it does wash away, that they'll cover me. And so he did help me out and I built the house and sure enough, eight years later, the, the water came in and washed away the first floor. And I have to thank you because I never invited you there. <laughs> but you helped me pay to <laughs> replace that first floor. And eventually the whole house went and you again paid. I mean, when you look at that growth of government chart and you think about some of that money is going to subsidize people like me building houses on the edge of an ocean, the role of government has gone well beyond the Constitution. <laughs>